Hey guys, I'm Deanna Nielsen. I'm studying to be an art teacher. And today I'd like to do a fun project with you where we make our own abstract sculptures, just like the one you see up here. And we're gonna make them out of materials you have at home. So first I'd like to talk about the history of sculpture for a minute. Sculpture has been around for a long time. We even have sculptures we found from the caveman times where they would carve figures or animals out of things like mammoth bone or rock. And there's been so many different types of sculptures throughout time and across the world. So I can't cover it all, but I'll cover a few highlights. So back in ancient Greece, back in ancient Greece, they would make sculptures out of marble and they would make them look like people. And they were so realistic that sometimes they would look like they were about to move, which is really, really cool. And then a lot of sculptures focused on people or religion for a long time. Around the beginning of the 20th century, art started to focus less on representing the world around us and more on representing ideas or just beauty itself. And that's because photography was becoming more popular and more easier for people to do. And so artists didn't need to copy the things around us as much. That's what photography did. So sculpture, just like many other kinds of art, began to be more broad and varied. And so you started seeing abstract sculptures, meaning that they weren't trying to represent anything. They were just trying to make something interesting or beautiful or unique. And so you would see artists like Louise Nelson who took pieces of wood and combined them so they looked interesting and would spray paint them and make them into an artwork. Or artists like Donald Judd who took simple shapes and made them beautiful colors and repeated them. And that was sculpture. And you see artists like Klaus Oldenburg, who took shapes that we see every day and blew them up so they were giants and made them into sculptures. And so you see many different artists working with many different mediums and creating sculptures. And so now sculptures can be made out of anything. And so today we're going to make sculptures out of paper towel rolls and toilet paper rolls. So you can pick whichever one you have on hand. I'm going to use a toilet paper roll and you need a cardboard base. I just cut this out of a cardboard box I had and that'll keep it from falling over when we're done. You need a hot glue gun, so make sure you have a parent helping you or another adult. You need some clean paint, paint brushes, something to put your paint on, some water to rinse out your paint brushes, and you can use scissors if you would like. So the first step is to take your paper towel or toilet paper roll, make it into an interesting shape. So you can see with the one up here, I bent it, I twisted it, I even cut a little bit off of the top. Be creative, come up with something unique. So I'm gonna be creative here. And I hope you're following along at home and coming up with some really cool ideas. I'm gonna combine these two into one sculpture. And I'm going to add some interesting shapes to it by pulling it apart a little bit. I'm folding parts of it. And I'm even going to cut a little bit out of it. So be as creative as you want. You can combine pieces together. This one I did a lot of folding to give it a unique shape. Twist it, you can tear it to be creative. Okay, so now I have this really unique sculpture. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue it to its base. So you want to make sure the bottom is flat enough that you can glue it and that you put it in the middle. And if you have different parts, you might need to glue them together. So I'm going to do that really fast just so they stay. Now it's working. Now remember, not you don't always want to put hot glue guns on their side, but mine's actually made to be able to do that. So just be careful. Okay, so now I'm putting some hot glue on the base so that the sculpture 
just stick to it. And be careful that you don't hit your hand on the hot glue because it is hot. And I would suggest using a low temperature to make sure you're staying safe. So once you have it on there, go ahead and hold it in place or if it's standing by itself, you can let it be and we're gonna let it dry. And while you're letting it dry, you can start picking out your paint. And so think about the colors you wanna use. Do you wanna use cool colors, warm colors? So today I'm gonna to use warm colors, just like red and colors like that. And if you put them in a room, the room would feel really warm and comfortable. And that's what you can think about warm colors and cool colors. It's an easy way to think about it. So I'm gonna do some similar colors today. So I'm gonna do a kind of a monochromatic sculpture. So all the colors are really close to each other. So I have red, pink, and dark red. So I call it a barn red. So this is all basically the same color, just with a little bit more black or white added to it. And I'm also gonna use some white, because that makes it really easy to mix. You can use some black. You can use whatever colors you want. Just think about how the colors are gonna to look together. So now I have my paint ready. My sculpture is dry, my hot glue is dry. So now I'm ready to go. I'm gonna put my hot glue off, gun off to the side and unplug it so it's cooling down. Now I'm gonna start painting. So you can be as creative as you want with painting. So be creative, paint away, and have fun doing it. I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna return when I'm done painting. All right, I finished painting my sculpture as you can see. So I wanted to show you a few of the things you can do when you paint yours. So you can see with this one, I have different colors, I have patterns, I have some blending of colors on the base. This one I focus just on color. And so I blended the different colors I used all around the sculpture to create a unique effect. So you can use lots of different colors like this one, you can use a few simple colors, you can add patterns, you can keep it simple, you can write on it, you can create little paintings on it of animals or people or whatever you can think of. So be creative. And one tip I have is to paint the inside as well, what you can see from the outside, because that'll make it look really nice. I hope you guys enjoyed making sculptures with me today, and I hope you had lots of fun. Hope to see you next time.